Hey everyone, Lisa Stenz here with video number three in the Distress Oxide Inks video series. Today we're going to talk about the embossed resist technique, water painting, and watercoloring with the Distress Oxide Inks. We're going to start off by embossing the floral details and background stamp onto a piece of Distress watercolor cardstock. The cardstock has a smooth side and a more textured side, and I like to use both for different things. And on this card, we're going to use the smooth side. So as you saw, I stamped the image with uh, Versamark ink and I'm sprinkling some white embossing powder on top. Then I'm going to go ahead and heat set it with the heat tool. It's a little tricky when you're heat embossing on white cardstock with white embossing powder. So I just wanted to check to make sure I got all of the areas melted nicely and the best way to do that is by holding it at an angle with some light so you can see if you missed any spots. Now I'm going to cover the entire sheet with some picked raspberry ink. And as you notice, I'm coming in at an angle from the right side or from the, the edge of the paper and I'm angling my tool a little bit to the right so that I'm not putting um, even pressure on. I'm putting more pressure on the right and that helps keep it from making um, uh, harsh marks and it blends a little bit more smoothly. So now that I got half of the sheet covered, I don't want to touch it with my fingers for a couple reasons. One, because it's going to get ink on your fingers. The pigment is still a little bit wet. And two, you don't want to get fingerprints on your project. So once you've got your whole piece of cardstock covered, you're going to take a dry paper towel and you're going to wipe away all the ink that's on top of the embossed areas. And this is the resist. The embossed areas um, will resist the ink. And so you can, you can see it without wiping it away, but once you wipe it away, it, it just it pops more and it makes it a little bit more stark. So as soon as I was done wiping it away, I went ahead and trimmed down that excess area around the outside. And then I decided to come in and add uh, a couple more colors. So here I'm adding the seedless preserves. And again, this is really where you want to focus on um, angling your tool a little bit and um, coming in from the outside and being very gentle as you're uh, blending in. So I went ahead and went all around the edges. And then I'm going to go back on top with the um, picked raspberry again just to blend it and you can see that these I've mentioned it before in my other videos but you can see that these inks just lay on top of each other so nicely and that just what is what helps it to give it a really good blend so I'm got, going back and forth between the two colors just to help it uh, blend a little bit better now I'm going to go in with some chip sapphire just around the edges to make it a little bit darker around the edges and to give it a little more depth. And these three colors blend so nicely together. So again, you're noticing, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but I am angling my tool out a little bit so that I don't get that harsh circle line from the end of the tool. And you'll probably notice my mat is getting a little bit dirty with all the ink. So this is another good use for those paper towels that you have in your craft room. Just spritz your mat with a little bit of water and go ahead and wipe it down. And now I'm just taking a dry paper towel and going over the entire piece again just to get any ink off of those embossed areas. Now we're going to do this super, super cool water painting technique. So as you remember from the first couple of videos, um, these inks react with water. So instead of spritzing water on, we're going to go ahead and paint water on. So I have a water brush here and it's, the barrel is just filled with plain water and we're just going to actually paint on top of this uh, inked cardstock with plain water. So I'm just going around the stamped image and filling in the petals and the leaves with the water and then dabbing it with a dry paper towel. And as you can see, it bleaches those areas. So it's just amazing to me that we're painting with water and it's giving us this super cool effect. I had so much fun with this technique. So I'm going to go ahead and go around and paint the entire image and just continue to dab it with the paper towel. 
and I think it turned out pretty neat. I, I'm really happy with it. So now I'm going to emboss a sentiment right in the center and you just want to make sure the ink is fully dry before you do this. And as you can see I stamped the sentiment with some Versamark ink and I'm going to go ahead and emboss it with the white embossing powder and he heat set it again just so that everything is melted and nice and dry. And now that front panel is done, we can go ahead and attach it to the card base. So I'm going to mat it with a piece of sapphire cardstock first and then adhere the entire thing to a card base and our card will be finished. And I made a similar card with a piece of craft cardstock and instead of using a water brush, I painted the images with a shimmer brush. Look at how beautiful that turned out. It still did the bleaching and it added a little bit of sparkle. I really love how it turned out with the shimmer brush. So now we're going to do a little bit of watercoloring. And this is a fun technique as well. So I went ahead and put a piece of the watercolor cardstock down on my craft mat and just held it in place with some washi tape that I had. And I put some ink on my craft mat like we did uh, earlier. And I'm just taking a water brush and I'm adding water directly to my cardstock first. And then I'm going to pick up some ink from my craft mat and just drop it onto the water on the cardstock. By doing it this way, the color's just going to bleed where you have the water on the cardstock. And it gives it a really cool watercolor effect. And then when you drop the other colors, it's going to blend really nicely. So I'm just cleaning off my brush on a dry paper towel and now I'm dropping uh, the next color. So I'm using the Peacock Feathers Chipped Sapphire and Seedless Preserves on this card and I think this is going to give a nice beautiful blend. And so as you can see I'm just adding more water and adding more color and um, when it feels like it's a little bit too messy and too wet I just dab it on the paper towel. And by doing it this way, you have a little more control, and it's interesting. It's like you don't want it to be perfect, but you do want to have a little bit of control. So I'm just going through and uh, blending the, the colors together a little bit, cleaning off my brush when I need to, and adding a little more water when I need to, and it's going to be just so beautiful when it dries. And when we hit it with the heat tool, um, all these colors are going to get a little bit more muted and it's just going to be beautiful. So now I'm going to pick up a little extra ink and add a little more water and I'm going to just splash it on it to give it um, just a little bit more of a watercolor effect with those splotches. I just think it gives it a little more authentic look. And I'm going to hit it with the heat tool and dry it just a little bit. And then I decided I think that I wanted to add a little bit more splotches. So I'm going to spray it with the water bottle again just a little bit and pick up that extra water with my uh, paper towels. And I think that was the perfect addition just to make it look a little bit more watercolory, if that's even a word. <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and dry it again. And I want to make sure that it's completely dry this time because I'm going to do a little bit of stamping on it and we always want to make sure that the, the ink is completely dry before you stamp on top of it. And one trick is to put your largest block on top of it or something heavy and flat on top of it just uh, while it's finishing up drying. That way it'll help keep it flat and it'll make it easier to attach to your card base later. Then I cut the word thanks, which came from the Artiste Cricut collection uh, on my Cricut out of a piece of black card stock three times and layered the three pieces together. And the ever so much stamp came from the shared happiness stamp set. And I just stamped that right underneath the word thanks. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach that word. I had just placed it there temporarily so I knew where to stamp the sentiment underneath. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach that piece to a black card base that I created with some black card stock. And I think it turned out okay. I, I really like how that blend uh, dried. It dried nice and muted and soft. And I created another similar card using the same technique. And this one was with chip sapphire, mowed lawn, and mustard seed. 
I hope you learned something new and are willing to try the embossed resist water painting or watercoloring techniques on your next projects. Stay tuned for the next video where you're going to learn some fun techniques on how to use your embossing folders with the Distress Oxide inks. See you then! Bye-bye!